Welcome and thank you for joining Oil & Gas 360. My next guest is president of an oil and gas company targeting the Eagleford Formation in South Texas, as well as the Tuscaloosa Marine Shale in Louisiana and Mississippi. Uh, Goodrich Petroleum last, or, uh, just recently re uh, announced a well announcement uh, in participation with Encana that re recorded a 72-hour production rate of around 1,100 barrels a day. Uh, first, can you provide us with an update um, on, on the well and fill us in a bit on what exactly the Tuscaloosa is and what attracted your entrance into the play? Well, Brian, um, good to be with you. We were looking for another area that would be very similar to the Eagleford uh, oil bearing. The Tuscaloosa is about 92 to 94 percent oil. Uh, you get very good uh, pricing. You get Louisiana light sweet pricing, which is very similar to, uh, to Brent crude. Uh, we looked to, for an area that had a lot of running room if we, if we proved that the play was going to work, which we think we're getting much closer to. And we were looking for a similar decline curve or profile to, to what we see in the Eagleford. So uh, obviously we've announced a, a, a well result, uh, the Anderson 17H, a very uh, attractive 72-hour rate of close to 1,100 barrels a day. And so far we're extremely encouraged by what we see. We like to see more wells and, and more history, but, uh, but that, was a, that was a great result and, and it's going to lead to further development. So what are your plans for, you know, for 2012 in the Tuscaloosa? Are you partnering with in, or, or are you partnering with Encana on the majority of your wells? And so when do you, when do you plan on, in, on initiating your operational program in the Tuscaloosa? Yeah, we'll, we'll have an interest in several Encana wells. Um, uh, it, it's certainly likely. We have a 25% interest in a well that's going down now. It's called the Joe Jackson well. Uh, but we've also commenced operated activities. Um, we, we moved a rig in two or three weeks ago or have already spud and are drilling on our uh, Dinkman well. So we'll, we'll maintain um, our non-operated activity. That could be a handful of wells. Uh, and we're likely to keep our operated activity uh, or keep that rig in the field and drill uh, as many as two to five wells for the rest of this year. With continued success, um, you're likely going to see us ramp up that development uh, and run as many as three or four rigs in 2013. But we'd just like to get a little bit further down the road before we, we set that. So the ultimate goal is to have more of an operated program in the play, is that? Yeah, no question. We're going we're gonna to have a combination of operated and non-operated. Um, in Mississippi in particular, we, uh, our acreage footprint overlaps with in Canada, so we would expect to have uh, participation in many of the Encana wells. About half of our block is, uh, a little less than half our block is in Mississippi where, where they are also. So it, we're going to have to sit down with them and design a, a, a development plan uh, and plan to, to both operate and not operate with, uh, with them in particular. In your company, or your company has proven historically that you've been able to acquire acreage at extremely low cost and you've been an early entrant into many plays. The Tuscaloosa looks to be no different, obviously. You know, do, do you plan to acquire additional acreage? Um, do you feel like you have ample running room now? Sort of, what's what's the goal there? Well, at 132,000 net acres, we we have the most leverage of any company in the play uh, relative to our size. So. Uh, we, we likely are, are near the end of our acreage acquisition. You know, we're in at $225 an acre, and if this thing follows the Eagleford playbook, you'll see five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 per acre of, of potential value. So at 5000 an acre, it's more than our market cap. So we already have a material position. We may, may add uh, small amounts of acreage when we drill wells if there's unleashed uh, interest mm -hmm. in those units, but I think it's more likely that the bulk of our, of our acquisition has already taken place and we're, we're, you know, we're excited about with, with the big uh, acreage position we've put together. So sw switching gears a little bit to the Eagleford, um, you, you've now drilled a number of wells, you know, obviously successfully into the formation. How much of your acreage has been de-risked and has your evaluation of the play you know, changed for the better or for worse since then? Yeah, the Eagleford's been as good as we had hoped it would be. Um, I, I would say the southern 60% of our block is clearly better. Mm -hmm. uh, it's based off of lighter crude and, and deeper formation, therefore higher uh, pressure and the ability to lift the liquids. We think all of our acreage has similar rock characteristics. It's just a little more challenging the, the more shallow you get. So uh, we're currently running you know, two to two and a half rigs for this year, uh, pad drilling. Uh, the well results are as, as hoped for, although lumping um, production volumes on a quarterly basis just because of the pad drilling. But 
uh, with the cost savings that we're seeing, uh, as much as $2 million a, a, dollars a well of cost savings, uh, there it makes sense to, to pad drill and, and you know, we, we like what we see. We also have that secondary objective in the, in the Buddha Lime. Ironically, the northern 50% of the acreage works better for the Buddha uh, than, in, than the southern 50%, at least so far. So uh, the secondary objective will allow us to, to likely uh, maintain some of that acreage block while we develop uh, the eagle fruit in the southern 60%. Okay, that makes sense. So, you know, two oil plays, obviously, you have the Tuscaloosa and the eagle for um, primary growth, growth drivers for your company. Um, for 2012 and beyond, what's What's the strategy in terms of allocating capital between those two plays? Well, we've been conservative on the allocation in 2012 to the Tuscaloosa, mainly because we wanted to see well results, uh, more wells, more history before we ramped up that activity. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we're likely to take our budget, or we very well could take our budget from 20 million to 45 million in the Tuscaloosa by virtue of of uh, uh, continued success in the play. The real ramp up occurs in 2013 and... and Where you obviously uh, run the more rigs also. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and that's just coming from, um, you know, de-risking of the acreage and, and ready to get more in the development mode. But with three to four rigs running, uh, along with a non-operated activity level with, with Encana, we have plenty of time to capture the acreage. You know, we have anywhere from uh, 18 months to five years uh, on, our, on our lease terms. Uh, we also have the ability uh, on about 50,000 acres uh, to, uh, to exercise uh, a continuous development provision built into the leases such that you can uh, drill one well every 180 days and hold that acreage. So I think the combination of of, of um, non-op and our increased uh, operated activity um, will allow us to capture the acreage pretty reasonably. So I have to ask, in terms of well economics and future resource potential, um, on the early evaluation of your t of your Tuscaloosa, how does that compare t to your Eagleford? You know, Tuscaloosa has certain advantages uh, to the Eagleford, um, primarily on price realizations. It, it's priced off of Louisiana Light Suite, which is much more similar to Brent crude pricing. So call it a $15 uplift mm -hmm. uh, there, or 15% uplift. And we have lower royalty burdens in the Tuscaloosa. Our average royalty burden there is about 20%. So you combine that 20% versus 25% in the Eagleford. So you combine that, you're really playing with 20 to 25% better economics as long as you can see a similar production decline profile as what we see in the Eagleford. And I'll, and I'll tell you, and more data will come out over time. So far, we're encouraged that we, we see at least that uh, on our initial well results. And so I think if we can prove that up, uh, you can afford to spend 20 to 25% more money as long as you get a similar production profile to what we see in the Eagleford, and, and I think we're, uh, we're more encouraged by that now. Long laterals matter. Um, they matter in the Eagleford. We mm -hmm. see better initial rates and flatter curves, and we think these latest Tuscaloosa wells that have longer laterals. Our first well was, was 7,300 foot lateral. That's the first long lateral, and we're, we're clearly seeing better uh, decline curves and better rates on those wells. So I think you'll continue to see us drill, you know, longer lateral wells and production profile so far looks very similar, if not better, than the Eagleford. Um, how are you seeing spacing in the Tuscaloosa? What are the, what's, what's spacing at? We would expect similar spacing to what we have in the Eagleford, which is, you know, if you drill a 7,200 foot lateral, 7,300 feet, you're looking at about 100 acres spacing. Okay. So obviously on 132,000 net acres, we have a lot of wells to drill. Right. You can hold the acreage, uh, you can hold about 1,000 to 1,280 acres per well uh, and then come back and downspace at a later date. So that gives you great flexibility uh, there and, and that's why we're, we're going to be able to capture the acreage in a reasonable period of time. Uh, but as far as for, for, you know, full development of the play, it's going to obviously take years and years and a lot of capital. All right. Well, Rob, we really appreciate you being here in London with us and stopping by to provide us an update on your Eagle for program and the exciting new Tuscaloosa. So we really appreciate it. Thank you, Brian.